and here we are with our third model of the uh, initial series the 172 RAF Red Arrows Hawk uh, from FX start set boxing so we had the brush the poly cement and the paints which have been ripped off and bagged up with all of the other goodies that I had knocking around uh, we'll get straight into the unboxing fantastic box art official red arrow product as well uh, bit of casual aerobatics our usual little bit of information uh, airfix point and uh, the Callum paint guide on the back I've already been in here so I could work out what I was going to say so we have four sprues and a, and a clear sprue that are coming out much harder than they went back in so Sprue A with the wings, tank, uh, intakes, pylons, and uh, most of the undercarriage. So interesting with this kit, the wheels for the rear undercarriage are separate from the hubs. And also on the hubs themselves, there's some flashing coming off, but that, those parts will be sitting inside the wheels. So cleaning those up and then hiding those won't be a problem at all. Uh, as with the NAT and the uh, Hawker Hurricane. The uh, wings are split along the front and sandwiched together with the training edge being part of the top surface. Some nice details there on the belly tank, nice uh, panel line details. On the wings lots of detail in the undercarriage and some internal detail as well on the underside for the undercarriage bays ah uh, yes the uh, cockpit tub has fallen off but we've got our Martin Baker ejector seats uh, this is sprue B oh it's all coming out in order wonderful with the rest of our rear undercarriage wheels with the in the hubs that the rear undercarriage axles and oleos will fit into uh, undercarriage doors uh, cockpit control consoles and ha various hatches air brakes etc on that sprue uh, on to sprue c so on sprue c we have our two fuselage halves so you can see it's uh, split straight down the middle this time with again lots of lovely lovely detail and uh, no control surfaces molded on the tails because they're uh, tailorons televators the whole tail on the hawk is a control surface so there's no need for a separate uh, articulating surface with nice molded details on top and beneath. A little bit of detail inside the cockpit. I'm sure with the tub added, you've got various parts of the undercarriage, uh, air brake and the pisset tube on the bottom here. And finally on to sprue D. So we have what I believe is part of the upper back, more cockpit parts, a single pilot, the rest of the un, uh, undercarriage bay, uh, undercarriage bay covers, uh, more molded detail inside the undercarriage bays on the lower surface of the wing, which also has some lovely sunken detail in. And the one, the one part I'd need to not lose to make this a complete kit versus the uh, NAS I've just completed. Yeah, lots of lovely detail, even on our pilot. A little bit of flash on the pilot, nothing 
severe, nothing extreme. A little bit of detail for our top part, top back of the fuselage. Well, let's get the cockpit tub out. So there's our tub. That's where everyone's going to sit. That's what's going to help sandwich the rest of the hull together. And our clear spruce. So uh, right there, you can see the detail in the canopy with the reinforcing all the deck cord or whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to call it. Uh, it's part of the canopy, clear part for the canopy, clear part for the nose. Beautifully molded, no flashing. Uh, if it wasn't for the curved nature of the plastic, it'd be lovely, uh, optically clear as well. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the plastic, it does warp the light that comes through, but it's a really nice high quality uh, piece of plastic. See if we can get you a closer look. Get you a closer look. There we go. Look at all that. All that detail on the clear part. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the sprues uh, via photo and then have a flick through the manual. So as becoming a bit of a theme with the uh, 172 manuals, we have our multilingual introduction to the aircraft with our facts and figures and the history. Several pages of warnings and instructions. Study drawings and practice assembly before cementing parts. Everybody take notes. Uh, advice to supervising adults, safety rules, and then on to the instructions themselves. So we've got our cockpit bin assembly with our seats, panels, decals, painting guide for our pilot. Uh, alternate parts for landing gear up or landing gear down with the cockpit tub coming together in a few simple steps and then getting sandwiched together uh, between the fuselage halves uh, evidently the kit's a bit tail heavy so we've got a five gram request to be put in the forward part of the model so it doesn't become a tail sitter. Uh, engine to cell assembly. It's going to be interesting seeing what the seam lines do on that, putting those together and then attaching them. Three part wings with a full span piece up, uh, underneath with the tops mounting on top, flipping it over, mounting our pylons and then bringing almost everything else together with the fuselage coming down onto the wings, canopy, uh, top back of the few uh, top middle of the fuselage and our aerials tail tailorons air brake in various guises open and closed uh, this is the rear under rear undercarriage coming together in the in pieces as I mentioned earlier and yep final assembly with undercarriage getting put in either with again with undercarriage down undercarriage up our degrees guides and the final part you put on is the air display tank also before I forget uh, another so it's uh, another pretty standard uh, set of instructions for airfix nice and clear step by step not as uh, I do still like the Hawker hurricane ones with the colors in uh, colored guide for assembly that was uh, really nice uh, one more thing that was in the box that I forgot to mention our decal sheet also so on top of the painting and decal guide on the back of the box you also have a separate stencil guide for all of the uh, stencils and date stencils and information that go all, all over the aircraft so that's that then another beautiful decal I can't remember who manufactured these I'm going to assume it's cartograph but another beautiful crystal clear 
he says as his camera struggles to focus. There we go. Uh, another lovely and clear decal sheet with all our blue numbers, side, tail, stencils, and all of the uh, airframe numbers for all the different red arrows. Underwing, yeah, it's really, really crisp. See how look absolutely glorious over uh, that lovely red arrow red color. So we've got our instructions. We have an additional sheet to help take us through all the stencils. Uh, let's take a look at the aftermarket parts. So as I've emphasized in my last few videos, I am learning. These are kits to learn lessons on to take forward onto more ambitious projects, which I'll be doing in 148th. I'm really looking forward to what this will look like after all the progress I made on the two Nats. Uh, so what, we, uh, what we've got to try out is the uh, die cut canopy masks from Edward and uh, Air Master Series, uh, Air Master Series Pisset Tube, which I'm, I think I don't need to cut and drill the model for like I did with the Nat. I think this just goes straight into the Pisset Tube hole, which would be really, really nice and make life so much easier and less fiddly and won't require me to order some really small drill bits. But yeah, that's all we've got as far as uh, extra modifications go. Nothing fancy, but just a couple of things to help things go a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother, theoretically. Well, proof is in the pudding. That's enough talking. Uh, I'm going to crack on with the build and we will pop in and out uh, with that like I did with the previous video uh, as and when I learn stuff discover stuff find out stuff notice anything uh, if that doesn't happen uh, I'll see you when it's time to fully assemble or paint something interesting And we're back and the postman bought me a new little uh, work area, which I really, really like. Although the camera doesn't, we'll just turn also focus off and struggle. There we go. Uh, so yeah, I can now shuffle my whole work area around without having to do it piecemeal. But you don't care about that. You want to see what I've done with this. So. Uh, most of the kits off the sprue. Uh, go back to the cockpit. So we've uh, filled the dead space in the cockpit with some shot and modelling putty. Uh, the instructions say five grams, so I've got four grams in there. And then another gram. Uh, it's all been dry fitted so it should still all fit together another five grams inside this part which sits between the trainee and supervising pilot position yeah most of the kits off the sprue only real issues I had so our pilot had seam lines up and down his side but we have gotten rid of those a uh, little bit of focus so he's a bit smoother up and down his sides, give him a bit of a shave. Uh, flashing, we had quite, a, so on the uh, rear undercarriage, on the part that's touching the blue tack, the interfacing side of the undercarriage, there was quite a lot of flash projecting out, but that, again, that's, that was on both of them, that tidied up quite nicely. The both halves of the fuselage had some flashing, uh, particularly around where the panel that mounts on behind the cockpit goes so inside the cockpits just make out the orange tape so that's in there for the surfaces that will be glued together so when I put some extra thin in it's got plastic on plastic contact and that's in both halves 
what else? What else is good? Uh, oh yeah, the canopy mask. So my first canopy mask set uh, applied beautifully with some paint on mask as well. So interestingly, this part here, there is no corresponding molded detail. And looking at my reference images, that white part you see back aft in the cockpit itself is inside which corresponds to the edges I believe of this piece so I'm next time you see this on the camera this may have this part painted over as well with liquid mask and I'll be spraying this part uh, with signal white to simulate to simulate that uh, white inner support for the cockpit but yeah the, the decal mask itself went on re really easily I may touch up what looked like some clear patches on the uh, liquid mask but yeah that's um that's a significant time saver rather than cutting it yourself uh, any other bit to look at so as with some of the previous kits the leading edge, I'm not sure, can you see it in the light? That's the leading edge of the wing had a seam running along it from where it sandwiches together from two parts. So I, as you've already seen, I made up some uh, milli putt and forced that in. A little bit of bleed over, but we'll give that a nice gentle brush uh, sanding. I'm going to uh, give one of these a go on that job. Nice, nice, um, high count grits and a polishing surface hopefully preserve all of this lovely uh, detail that the kit already has but just get rid of the uh, lumps and bumps from the midi part that's it for now so next we're going to be painting the cockpit black and doing the insides of uh, doing the insides of the cockpit itself then it'll be partial assembly, so any excess paint will be getting rubbed off on the contact areas to make sure we get a nice strong plastic on plastic connection whilst the uh, glue goes to work on that. And then it'll be yeah, assembly, base coating, final assembly, gloss, decals, all the good stuff. But yeah, we're at a point now where we can move on. Let's, let's get on with it. Right, guys, uh, forgive the mess. Uh, we've just finished, uh, well, for me, are the finishing touches on the cockpit assembly. So let's get in there. So you've got the uh, autofocus on. So you've got the cockpit decals in, not fantastically, but that's all been glossed as well. The pilot figure, of course, is in uh, with some semi-accurate colouring and a little bit of staining on as well to help. With the... No, let's try that way. There we go. Yep, cockpit decals are in along with our pilot and a not entirely terrible freehand painting red arrow arrow. Uh, all I need to do is touch a few bits like on the seat with a bit of mat as well as the pilot himself. No one wears plastic overalls, especially if there's a chance you're going to catch fire. Uh, yeah, this is it. I'm going to just take the paint off of a few edges and then uh, crack on with assembly. But yeah really happy with the result we've got our pilot sort of floating above his seat as airfix pilots are want to do uh, only thing was where i've of course put the some of the nose ballast in here these are uh, been chopped off at the ankle so he's got no rudder control unfortunately but being a static display uh, hopefully that won't be too big of an issue yeah one cockpit one set of decals and a little bit closer to assembly
not a bad little bit of work. We've uh, got the initial construction done, guys. So, uh, only step that I've missed from the instructions is I've left the uh, bucket. Oh, let's get that in the camera. I've left. Oh no. There we go. Focus. Left the bucket out so that I've got somewhere to stick a bit of sprue or one of my pegs, so I can move it around and not worry about not painting something. Uh, extensive use of my spring-loaded clips to hold everything together as it will glue together. It's all gone relatively nicely. Uh, once a, so once again, there's a bit of a gap there between the wings and the fuselage. Seems to be a recurring problem. And just where I've overstuffed the cockpit a bit, you can see there's a bit of a gap there just in front of the pilot. Uh, who's sat quite happily. So we've got weight just here in front of the pilot as well as some weight underneath here in the partition between the trainee and senior pilot. Some lines on the top of the engine intakes around the edges that will have to get puttied and sanded. Uh, the top seam of the fuselage itself has gone away with the judicious use of some glue. Uh, as well as down the side of the t of the vertical part of the tail. Nice little standoff on between the tails, between the uh, tailorons and the hull, just like the real thing. Uh, any other issue I had, so the forward part of the wing was sat a bit proud, but I just when I uh, glued on the smoke tank, I just threw some cement acid and held it together and that seems to have gotten rid of that little step a little bit of a gap there debating whether or not to putty it to be honest uh yeah we're gonna move on to tidying things up now uh what i have already done is with the wings where i puttied the leading edge on the wings i've sanded that and rescribe the lines so that they follow all the way around. Uh, let's see, can we get close? And, oh, yes, you can. You can see my lovely, lovely work. And if I come this way, oh no, come on, camera. There we go. Yeah, my uh, first proper go at rescribing, and it didn't go awfully well, apart from. Oh, let's take auto focus off again. So just a little feathery bit there, attack that with some extra thin. Doesn't really, uh, yeah. I slipped, but I'm going to live with it. It's it's a mistake. It's not the end of the world. Uh, the qual so apart from uh, this growing gap here, the ease with which everything went together uh, was really, really nice. Uh, only problem is this splitting here but that's probably because of my overzealous uh nose weight uh, that's the thing so the nose wheel itself as a single unit is so much sturdier than i'm used to with the nat so i'm not i'm still aware of it but i'm not paranoid about it yeah uh yeah a little bit of gap filling and rescribing a bit of sanding here and there and then we'll carry on with construction, get the rest of the cocktail, co cocktail, cockpit internals painted and then get the canopy glued on with some crystal clear. Yeah, really nice. And with the nose weights in as well as that, it feels quite substantial. But yeah, some really nice progress with the uh, Hawk. Uh, next time, next time I'll show you this will be after almost everything else is on for that initial base coat. I think just before, yeah, just before after after detailing and after filling in the mistakes and then adding more parts and that initial base coat. Brilliant. Righty ho, guys. We're pretty much there with uh, assembly. The only parts left are the. Uh, 
screen and canopy to go on, but those will go on after the cockpit. Been I finished painting the cockpit, leaving the real undercarriage wheels off uh, for that little bit more fidelity with the detail. And we've also got the jet exhaust bucket. As for the kit itself, I'm a little bit concerned about how the integrity of this undercarriage, uh, but we'll run with it, see how it goes. Can always re glue it. Not quite true, not quite right, but it's not the worst that I've seen. As a, a lot more sturdier than I'm used to with the uh, Nats undercarriage, anyway, uh, but not quite as good as the uh, Hurricane. So, yeah, undercarriage flaps are all on fixed in and the carriage itself we've got the uh, aftermarket pitted tube uh, in with some nice slow drying black cyanoacrylic so I can I was able to tweak it and reposition it we've got the oh got the aerials on what else uh, the air brake and the uh, stabilators whatever they are other side of that fitted and I uh, I did do a little experiment earlier the nose weight that I added in is doing the job uh, what I think what helps as well is that the undercarriage wheels are offset and swing toward the rear which helps that move the fulcrum back so the forward weight has more effect we've sanded down the uh, putty rescribed bits where it needs rescribing Uh, what else have we added? Yeah, that's it. Undercarriage flaps, aerials. Yeah, just going to leave it to one side and let the cement finish unmelting the styrene. And then when it's a bit less fragile, we'll get the cockpit parts painted up. So I've got uh, signalers wiped put around on the edge of this for that internal framing of the cockpit. Uh, we'll put some more liquid mask on the external part of the canopy itself and get the canopy glued in place and that will be the cockpit completely done and sealed up and then we'll move across to the uh, airbrushing booth and yeah get the base coat on uh, best position for this at the moment is literally on the pilot's head that leaves the aerials untouched, the pitted tube off the ground. Just going to let everything set and dry and just get a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more handleable. Bit of tape on that, bit of tape on these. Those have got blue tack in the parts so I want to keep paint free. So, yeah, white, black, black. Ooh. And we can hand brush we've got the masks for the wheels as well yeah all in hand all looking all looking good and we're back it's now the other side of christmas uh, around all of that bits and pieces have gone on with the kit we have uh dropped and nudged and poked this poor tortured pitted tube so many times now and scratch the paints off and put the paint back on and off and on and off and on. Uh, but uh, the model stands new, of course. You won't recognize that. Uh, it's okay, it's not great. It's doing the job for now. I might get something better. I'll give this a few builds to uh, grow on me or not. We'll see. Uh, going back to the previous video, so our gaps have been filled, sanded and painted over a few times. We've gone over the whole kit a few times with uh, primer uh, and gotten to the uh, pre-painted and detailed the undercarriage. Marked that off as best I can. No doubt that I'll need uh, some, some attention with the brush later. Same with the rear undercarriage. Done as best the job I can. Uh, everything's just about ready to be attacked with that lovely red 
that's just here. So signal red, another Hataka paint. We will be adding uh, a couple of drops of the traffic white as well, uh, just to help with opacity for the first layer or two. Uh, where I've not done the pre-shading, I'm expecting this to even out and come up nice and red really quick, uh, really quickly. So maybe hoping just to put down a couple of coats before we gloss and do decals and weathering. Uh, regarding the decals, I'm quite looking forward to that because there's, uh, there's a lot of detail panelling uh, open parts. So that's uh, the, the difficulty, the complexity there uh, appeals to my inner nerd. Uh, ooh, before I forget, I'll just shift that to one side and one go without worrying about anything, which is exactly why I got the stand. So we've got... See if you can uh, can't. So you can see the exhaust is off black. That's the Ammo Mig Jess exhaust burn iron. So I said black, but I thought I'd go with something a little bit different. So the first time I tried to use this, I hadn't shaken it up enough on a pre on one of the previous nats, and it came out all watery and weird and didn't go down well. But between the Vortex mixer and some vigorous uh, rattling of the mixing ball in the pot, it's this really nice, like slightly browny, purpley off black. That's that like deep corrosion that you sort of colour that you see on machine parts. Uh, what else have we got? We've also got the wheels. You don't want to focus, do you? Let's take that off and bring that oh wow so yep yeah, the polished metal uh, for the silver Let's tweak that focus a little bit more I think yeah there we go polished metal for the silver uh, I base coated that with the Games Workshop Papadon Black, which is a paint on primer, which is really, really handy for parts like this that you don't want to get the airbrush out for. And yeah, just been slowly touching everything in with a brush. Uh, a little bit of build up, but yeah, you've got the unpainted side, which will glue straight onto the hubs on the rear undercarriage. Only bit of brush, painting I've really got left will be the details for where the for Ooh, good grief ah it's because that's not on autofocus also white band no it's, that's awful is the uh, underneath the pitted tube where the landing light will go which is just there so yeah off 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 to the airbrushing table now or off to the airbrushing booth rather uh, I'll be back in a bit after the first coat. All right, and we're back after our first couple of spray downs with the, as you can see, quite delightful uh, signal red uh, with a bit of traffic white for opacity, as I said earlier. It's looking really good. Uh, when I left the model to dry earlier, there was signs of quite a bit of overspray on the tank underneath from where I was trying to get paint in some of the detail areas. Still a little bit of uneven coverage on the wings and particularly the tail that I can notice and in the seams along the uh, slats underneath the wings. But the generally the coverage is beautiful and even, lovely and smooth. I'm so pleased. There are a few rough areas, uh, but nothing to write home about the detailing particularly on the upper surfaces of the wing are still lovely and crisp what we on also let's play with that until we go blind nope 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 there maybe there there we go yeah, got loads of lovely detail still on the body 
the wing surface everything's just come out really nicely on this not quite enough coverage on the back end but we can solve that with the next few layers so when uh what ratio so we were at 12 foot pounds out of the pump with a point with a quarter mil needle so we were four to one with the paint uh use the attack attacker zone acrylic thinner uh ten dro uh five drops of that no three drops of that to two drops of vallejo's flow improver it's given us a generally quite lovely smooth finish um yeah again i'd say it a lot but i'm just so happy with the finish uh and that all this experimenting really is paying off it's not perfect uh, so, so any real problem thing that i'm not happy with is where i used the uh not microsol but the canopy glue it's come out so we, we're missing that there's a bit of an edge there we'll see if it, we can pick it up with enamels later but yeah that's really the only problem i thought the overspray would be a problem you can just make out a glossy edge to the like bulge of paint but ev yeah it's gone down generally really nice and evenly uh going to go back over it again once or twice uh without the white for opacity just darken it down a teeny tiny bit and yeah that's, that's the uh first go with the airbrush on the kit get another layer down leave it overnight and then it will be a gloss layer hopefully tomorrow decals enamels another layer of gloss glue it together and that will be my uh, third fiddle around and find out kit done bloody hell it's exciting i have to pick which uh, particular red arrow i want to model next oh decisions decisions all right everyone and we're back again we have got the second layer on and i am thrilled with how good this already looks uh we've also put the wheels on and demasked just to see where we've had some paint leak through but just gonna play with the focus again oh yeah that'll do he says the uh, yeah, um, it's a, not not perfect. I'm not going to go that far, but it's a really nice finish. A uh, bit of leak through, as you can see in the undercarriage bays. So, and a few bits to touch up with the brush. I mean, it's that orange. It looks really weird on my screen. I don't know how it'll look in the final video. And we also got the back end touching as well so uh, it'll be a uh, touch up with the brushes and then a gloss coat and we'll come back after that and then we'll be on to decals and uh, enamel wash weathering i'm just oh it it's such it's so good i mean the only part worth that i might be slightly miffed about is the bit of a paint bulge from the overspray yeah it, it just looks so good yeah bit of detail work to go in on the ram in the f in the air brake uh and yeah just bits to touch up uh, in the undercarriage bay there apart from that the masking predominantly did its did its job i haven't turned the uh pitted tube into something resembling a teletubbies antenna either which is always a plus yeah we'll get it brushed and glossed and we'll come back and see what it looks like it's uh been a very productive day today i'm about to move on to decals and uh panel lining but we've got the gloss on and it there's still that slight pebbliness to the texture but again it's gone down a lot smoother than either of the previous kits 
let's see if you can so you can just make it out on the wings there uh, all being said though again really happy with the overall finish and it just looks so oh yeah the the kit it's all come together and it just looks so good i'm so proud so happy so we've uh got the wheels on we've got just a little bit of detailing thrown in in the wheel bays something needs to be some plastic bag needs to be pulled out from where i stuffed it in there wonderful a uh, little bit of touching in with the brush that's all blended in quite nicely around the, around the bays and in the bays themselves uh, got the exhaust cone i've got a kit with its exhaust cone fitted everybody this is the first of three ah <sighs> haven't lost any bits uh yeah it's all yeah all together all looking just absolutely bloody lovely Now we're going to pick out all of that lovely detail with a black enamel wash after getting the, dec the decals down. It's so pretty, the camera's having difficulties focusing. Let's take also off. So yeah, just a little bit of the blue can uh, liquid canopy mask on the clear part there so it doesn't get varnished and go all cloudy everything else is still in place on the canopy itself so it'll be uh, so the seam on the bottom is still quite prominent unfortunately got a bang up job of hiding it away on the top i'd like to think uh, it's a bit more prominent on the nose again where i uh, had to keep on adjusting the pisset tube because i can't not knock it because i'm an enormous clumsy oaf it, yeah i'm it's all come together so nicely it looks so good and i'm so happy uh there are a few things that i will criticize about the kit but we'll wait till the end of build review on to uh decals we'll be back after the decals and before the panel wash for a quick look All right, guys, and there she is, the finished product, and I'm delighted with what I've achieved, what I've managed. Uh, the kit looks great, despite the fact that I have bounced the piss at cheap off of just about everything I can and dropped the model a couple, kit a couple of times. We've put our final gloss on. The canopy masks are off, so we've got access... Uh, Get our eyes in on detail inside the cockpit, which we'll have a look at in a bit. Uh, pin wash went on really nicely. Uh, excess came off with a cotton bud and some enamel thinner. So, uh, yeah, let's get a bit closer. So, I was worried about the opacity on the decals, but as you can see, they are beautifully white. Only thing, only let down, I don't know if I've done something different or wrong but the or if it's the size of them but the decals haven't sunk into the panel lines as well as on previous kits and where you've got the small nodules the small lumps uh just behind the panel line on a training edge on the leading edge sorry of the wing the roundels haven't quite settled properly Come on, focus. Uh, auto focus off. There we go. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. The exhaust has gone on and in wonderfully. Picked out a bit of detail again on the undercarriage. I just think it just work uh, in the undercarriage bays and the undercarriage itself the didn't do as good a job tidying up the tail or the inside of the doors unfortunately despite the fact i had this on its back and was giving it a damn good looking at just missed it unfortunately 
Uh, on the underside, only real let down. There's still a bit of a seam line on the underside of the body. Just didn't put the work in there. Next time, I'll know better. The under again the un so the undercarriage is more solid than it was, uh, but it's not the sturdiest. The nose is still quite nice. Uh, what else? Decals. So again, the decals haven't really gone for the panel lines and the arrow part the what uh, especially around the wing booms uh, it isn't shaped to go over them so i've had to split and soften and really fiddle around with the decal if i were to do this again i'd leave these parts off and secure them in place after guessing this far with uh guessing further with the kit uh lesson the carry forward into the next one uh, the finish isn't I've still not managed to get mirror smooth it's still a little bit pebbly or that not as not I wouldn't go as far as say as that orange peel effect but it's not perfectly smooth it looks quite lovely there however I am very happy with the result but it's not perfect yet the repair work I did behind the engine intakes was taken really well. You wouldn't know I'd had to do anything underneath all of this paint. Pisser tube, absolutely fine. Yep, canopy's gone down great. Aerials are still attached as well. I'm very proud of that. Our exhaust bucket, what else, what else? Tail. Yeah, that's about it. Slightly wonky undercarriage. Seam lines we've talked about before with the engine engine intakes and either side of the wing joint. Again, and it's a, a feature on airfix kits, it seems. Gaps where the wings meet the body. Uh, not a great deal to see, really, in the cockpit without... Uh, yeah, shame. No, this, uh, there's colour there. There's... A very happy pilot with his head touching the, the top of the canopy it seems uh, yeah lovely kit look the work I've put in has made it beautiful not that the kit is without its own merits there's lots to like about it the wing detail the fuselage detail the un the undercarriage is okay it's not great but it's be it's better than the nat and it's better than the 109 that I built as well just enough detail to keep you interested the deca uh, the long decals here that come down the tail of the fuselage had to be, were, are continuous so they're designed to go along a flat piece you have to cut them and there are marks on the decal sheet on where to cut them to get them to mat uh, split for the body the air brake and then the tail component just so you're aware uh, 7 8 out of 10 not the best kit ever loads loads of stuff i like about it but yeah just the the few things that let it down uh i'll be going up on the shelf again soon and just looking utterly bloody lovely Well, I liked how the uh, undercarriage was broken down to make it easy to paint or so that they could add more detail to the moulds. It's just a bit of a letdown with how it comes together. The decals are broken down very cleverly so that you can get all those teeny tiny details decaled in, but the underwing decal should definitely be down first before you add these uh, parts I can't remember the proper term for them now gap to fill on the leading edge of the wing once you sandwich the wings together gap to fill either side of the wings when you attach it to the body and again gaps on the engine intakes that's it the decals are great I did something wrong so they didn't uh, form to the panel lines and yeah loads of decent on the canopy loads of stuff to pick up a panel lining the, the apart from the fact that the cows didn't sink in which is my fault they look 
splendid, lovely, and not completely opaque, but for a printed decal on a bright red aircraft, uh, pretty damn good. And I think you can see how good they look it, with a nice strong light source on a table or up on a shelf to present. You can't really go wrong with this kit. Great likeness, great kit. All goes together quite simply. Just make sure that you put the nose weights in and you're absolutely laughing. Cheers for watching guys. Now let's uh, take a closer look.